those that don't know who they are. And who are the ones that don't know who they are? Do you remember the scripture that was read today? It talked about a blind man that had a disability. He had trauma. He had something wrong with him. He had events happen maybe in his life. Maybe for you, it was domestic violence growing up. You pick a trauma. Whatever you've been through, just apply it to that Bible scripture. And the disciples were trying to figure out, so what's the deal with this guy? Is that because his parents did something and that's his karma? And Jesus said, no, 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 you don't understand. These events that come into our life, when we transform, when, when, when we transmute them, when we recognize who we really are, that's the power of God coming through that situation, transforming that situation, transforming that person. They know that they're the light of the world and they go out and shine the light and make the world better. Should I repeat that one more time? Because you can run over that Bible scripture a hundred times and not get what it's talking about. It's talking about you. It's talking about you with all the stuff that you've been through, with all the stuff that you think is so horrible, with all the stuff that you think you can't overcome, with all the stuff you think another person can't overcome because it's so big that it's so horrible. What Jesus is saying, okay, look, the reason it's so horrible is because when you transmute that, when you remember who you are, when you forget about the world's definition of you, when you start telling a different story about that event and that happened to you or that happened to another person, that is an opportunity for the power of God, the light of God to come into that situation, come into that person, and then they become a lighthouse. Jesus wasn't saying he is the light of the world only. He's saying that once that person isn't blind anymore to who they are, they become to shine like a light, like Jesus was saying, like me, and then the world becomes better. Did you hear what I said? I said the world comes better when you get better. That's what that Bible scripture is saying. And you can read it a thousand times, but it's not really a puzzle. We've got to get to the point where we recognize that we have been putting a cover over our light based on events that happen to us and based on events that happen in the world. And we think that defines us or our situation. And it does not. Within our DNA is a puzzle box that is just waiting to unlock the light that is so bright. It shines so that other people can see what? The power of God and see the light that's also within them and it might be dormant. Do you understand that when your light is beaming that that affects people? that that vibration has an effect in the world. It starts out with your family, because those are the closest to you. But then you go to work and your light is shining and people, they don't know what it is, but there's something different about you. You're not criticizing everybody like everybody else is. You just have a happy thing, even though the news said something was going on. You're just happy. That's the light of God within you that's shining through. And people can see it, they can feel it. You are the light of the world. The world doesn't give you anything. It comes from within you. You're not dependent on what's going on in the world. You're not waiting for a savior, you are the savior. Why do you think Jesus was in the marketplace right outside the temple? Did you hear me? There was a marketplace right outside the temple. So people came to pray, but it was also a money-making machine. It was like, okay, if you want a blessing, you're going to have to buy that lamb. You buy the lamb, then pay the priests to slaughter the lamb, and then you might get a blessing. Well, what if you didn't have enough money to buy the lamb? I guess you're not getting a blessing, right? That's not how it is. Jesus was saying, you don't need a go-between. God is right here. I am the light of the world, and you're the light of the world too. But as long as you're hiding under the events, and hiding under a particular definition, or 
dependent on the world to give you who you are, then I'm sorry. You're going to have to recognize who you are. And you are a light. So then I look back at me sitting in the pew at that University of Metaphysics old temple. And when the person said, all of y'all sitting here, you think you're you, the face that looks back at you at the mirror? But let me tell you something. If that meat suit wasn't there, you'd be pure light. And guess what? You all look the same light. So now you have a disguise on, and it's harder to recognize you. But you're me. I see that so cleanly now. You're me. You got on a different sweater, but you're me. Why? Because the same light that is in me is also in you. Now, the world will tell you that we're so different. Oh my gosh, we're so different. You come from here. You like the Raiders. I don't, right? There's all kinds of divisions. Don't get it twisted. That's a distraction. We're here to know the truth. And the truth will. I'm free to love you as long as I love me. How do I love me? I got to know who I am. I am the light of the world. Amen? Amen? Now, how do you put that into practical use? Let me tell you a story. I used to be a therapist. I worked for the county. Usually when you work for the state or the city, you have 30 years until you can get your full retirement. Anybody know about that? So they call it golden handcuffs, because you probably, right? You want to leave at 10 years right but then you're like oh I gotta keep going to work I got to you know and you have people dragging themselves to work waiting for that 30 years well I loved my job I wasn't dragging myself to work I loved everybody there and it took a while to get there I'm not saying that I started out loving everybody as I began to know who I was I could also see the light in my boss whom I couldn't stand okay so I had to learn and do practices and get to a point where I just loved everybody. So I loved my job. I was planning on staying there 30 years, not a problem. But then I was getting messages from the divine kingdom of God, which is within my heart and within my mind. And those messages were saying, leave the job, retire. And I'm like, well, I, I feel good, I'm fit, I'm young. Why am I leaving my job before my 30 years? That doesn't make sense. So I had to listen to that light within me. I didn't have a reason to go and retire. But it was in my mind, and I started talking about it. And there was a fear that came up. And I said, wait a minute, I'm a spiritual teacher. I don't have fears. I wrote a book on not having fears. What is this fear cropping up? And it was the fear of lack, limitation. What's going to happen if I don't have my job? Have you ever had those kind of fears? So I'm getting the spirit telling me one thing, and then the world is telling me, no, you got to keep your job for 30 years. You don't want to leave money on the table. You've heard that before? All these things were coming into my mind, justifying not listening to my inner voice, my God voice. Finally, my son um, gave me a call. I was at work. He said, Mom, Dad just died. They took his body to the hospital. I'm in the hospital with him. He's in the emergency room. He had a heart attack. I left work. I rushed to the hospital. This was totally unexpected. My son, who was about 24 at the time, was holding it together because he was the only legal guardian. So the hospital was asking him questions. What do you want to do with the body? And he was holding it together so nicely and just so gentlemanly. And I said, wow, this is amazing. And so the day after that happened, I listened to my voice. I went to PERS, which is the public retirement company, and I turned in my resignation where I'm going to start the process of retiring because I felt like, yeah, this is it. There's there's sometimes an event that happens and you say, okay, yeah, I'm going to let go of that fear. I'm just going to trust. I'm going to walk out onto air 
and know that God has me. But I still didn't know why. I didn't know if this career of speaking in front of people was going to take off. I didn't know why. I didn't know any answers. So sometimes when you're following God and you want to have a plan, good luck with that. Because God talks to you in the moment. Not two weeks from now. Two weeks from now, I'm going to get, at 2 o'clock, I'm going to get a plan from God. No. It's inch by inch, step by step, thought by thought, person by person, in the moment. And so I just knew that I needed to be present in the moment without any stress so that I could hear clearly the word of God. And so I retired. I'm at home. I'm talking to my son. He's a really depressed. This is two months later. And it's really hitting him about the loss. Because my son and his dad, they were close. They were like mini-me. I mean, if you look at my son, you're looking at his father, and vice versa. They spent lots of time together. Beautiful relationship. Two months later, my son is depressed, and I'm a retired therapist. So I go to him, and I say, how are you doing? And he said, fine. And I said, you don't look fine, and I, you don't feel fine to me. I said, have you thought about suicide? A therapist, you go all the way there. You're not pussyfooting around. And he said, Mom, every day I want to kill myself. And I listened to him. Not only did I listen to him, but the same light that is in him is also in me. And so I said, OK, God, what do you want me to do? Because I don't go to work now. I can be in the home vibrating this light 24-7. Do you know what he needs? He needs a high vibrational light of wholeness, of love, of joy. And what does that do? It shines a light that shows others who they are. And it connects them with a vibratory force. Now, you can't see this, but it's all around us. It's what we're living in. It is the mind of God. So when I am vibrating as high with a frequency as I can, it's going to affect a person that's living in my house. Hello? Hello. Just like anger? Just like resentment, just like anger can affect somebody in the house. Have you ever lived with somebody that's not well and violent and domestic violence? I have. It affected everything in the house. So what if I am the light of the world and those, things, those words jump off the page? And if I'm the light of the world, what medicine am I? I am the medicine that he needs. That is the cure for depression. That is the cure for suicide. It's not a cute saying. This is Prozac, better than Prozac. Why do they call him the healer? He is the minister. That energy is the healing energy. It's not some person in the sky. It is something that we manifest within ourselves when we overcome ourselves. So I went in my room, which is my sanctuary. My whole house is a temple. My room is a sanctuary. My heart is a cathedral. So I went in there, and I said, I've got to be still. And when I was still, I had the audacity to say I am God. Are you there? Do you have the audacity to say, I am God? And so I was beaming with joy every time in that house. I didn't have moments where I doubted. I trusted that energy. And then a voice said, you've got to touch him every day. And I'm not talking about a reluctant hug, because sometimes he's reluctant with his hugs when he's depressed. So God said, you've got to touch him. Ask him if he'll let you do a facial. 
And he, I said, you know, hon, you know, I could clean your face. I could do all this stuff. I didn't say I'm going to lay hands on you and I'm going to heal you because he's in that zone. I need to do this vibrationally. And so I started cleaning his face every day. And while I was holding his head, I was quantumly in the field, in the magnetic field going, you are whole and complete. You are wonderful. You have no lack. You are full of abundance. So what am I telling you? That this stuff on the page is what we are. We need to activate it. We are the light of the world. What does that mean? We shine in the darkness with our vibration and we lift up those that don't know who they are. He had forgotten who he was. And over months and months, I have a healthy, safe son that is beautiful and knows exactly who he is. He is in touch with that light because I knew who I am. So just because the world has a lower frequency and the world is in darkness, oh, they don't know that I'm here and I see them. But every day I affirm what I want to see in the world. So when you see darkness, you affirm, have the audacity to say, I am God. God is in me. And I am shining it. I'm shining it. That's my job to shine it. I don't have to tell people I'm healing you, but I can look at you and say, oh, you are so beautiful. I see you even if you don't see yourself. That's healing. I need to know who you are, but I can't do that if I don't know who I am. You are the light of the world, and I can say that until I'm blue in the face, but if you haven't overcome what is blocking you from seeing that God is not up in the clouds somewhere, it is in your meat suit. And I see it so clearly. When I see it, I can bring it out. I can bring it forth by telling you, oh, you're just so magnificent. You're so beautiful. You're so wonderful. And I can do that even quiet in the mind of God because the mind of God is everywhere. We're living, breathing, having our being in this Christ consciousness, which is everywhere. Amen. Amen. Let's take a deep breath. So you wake up in this spirit. You wake up and you walk with this spiritual energy. It's not something that you put down and you pick up later. I'm going to put it down at, at home and then I'm going to go to work without it. You've got to wake up with it. Here are my sisters, by the way. So, this, yeah. <laughs> a little short there. Okay, so this is just a song that kind of exemplifies what we've been talking about. And if you remember the words, and even if you don't remember the words, sing along. It doesn't matter. Okay. Well, I woke up this morning with my mind stayed on spirit. I woke up this morning with my mind Stayed on spirit. Well, I woke up this morning with my mind. Stayed on spirit. Hallelujah. 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 Well, I'm walking and talking with my mind. Stayed on spirit. Well, I'm walking and talking with my mind. Stayed on 
I'm spirit when I'm walking and talking with my mind. Stand on spirit. So that's not lost on me. These are my sisters, and isn't that a blessing? Yes, yes that is not, yes. Yeah. They live in New York, and I live in Las Vegas, and we just um, have uh, a love of um, each other. Amen. 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 So this light that is in each and every one of us needs to shine in this particular time because we have people and structures that do not know who they are. Our job is not to change another person. Our job is to try to connect with that light that is within us, remove all the blockages, remove all the blockages, which can be like hate, anger, all of those things, unforgiveness, we have compassion for ourselves and we must deeply love ourselves because within us is the activating force of God. And you cannot have that God energy within you, have God in your heart, and see the devil in everybody else. That is not how it works, even though I was raised in a church that that's how it worked. But we don't believe those old energies anymore. They had their time. They had their opportunity to be on the planet, but not anymore. This is a new age, and the activation is more intense now. Why? Because we need it now. There are more people that are asleep. Our job is not to change them, to argue with them. Our job is to love them, because this energy only knows a loving response only knows a loving reaction. That is what's going to change it to what we say we want. And what we want is unity. We want everyone to see who they are. But they only can do that if we do it. So there is no savior to save us. We are it. I always say, tag your it. <laughs> If you're looking for somebody to save you, tag, you're it, okay? 
So just releasing those blockages, increasing that light love energy, that God energy, having the audacity to be still and know that I am God. That is not blasphemy. That is evolution. We are evolving into what we are created to be. We are made in the image and likeness of God. Amen. That, amen. That is not foreign anymore. This has to be your credo, your identity, pure light, and you shine it, and that is what the world needs. Right now, I'd like to do a treatment, so it's kind of a meditation. You can close your eyes or you can leave them open, but this is a way of just opening your heart so that we can activate that DNA. You have everything that you need. There's nothing that you have to go out and get. You are perfectly made. You're so beautiful, so wonderful. Just know that about yourself. If you feel a resistance coming up, that's okay. Just let it go lovingly. And let's activate that presence in this meditation.
you're still in that state of knowing who you are just know that you are and there are no English words that I can use to describe the beauty if I said you were awesome that just does not cut it if I said you were powerful you have no idea what power is but you have no beginning and you have no end you are wonderfully and perfectly made you have everything that you need everything you need for joy and happiness and abundance within you there's no room for doubt in every holy scripture it describes the light and what it is and that it's in you and just because it's distorted doesn't mean you have to believe the distortion get to the truth that is who you are the beauty that you are the individual that you are the uniqueness that you are needs the light to shine through you that's what our planet needs Our planet doesn't generate light you generate light you shine light on a planet expecting the planet to be the light that's a distortion you are it it is you my beloved my beloved and because I know who I am there's not a single person in this room that can unring this bell I am telling you I am showing you and in a feeling way as I've touched the vibration of the air in this room and you are in it you will never not know who you are you will never fall asleep again and there may be people all around you that don't know who you are why do you think you're here to shine your light that is your purpose you will never go to sleep again when I say namaste to you I will be saying I see the light that is in you that is also in me and when you say it you'll mean it namaste